what is one fear that you have that is holding you back in your business? What is one habit that you need to adopt that will help you to succeed? And what's one habit you need to break? Who do you need to forgive to become a better leader? If it's yourself, what do you need to forgive yourself for? And what is one thing about this career that you are grateful for? Are you all in or divided? When will you start taking massive action? We, we put this lineup in place for a reason, right? And your next speaker is um, one of my favorite people on the earth and has become really close friend and obviously he's a partner in it consolidated now. But, uh, but in his own right, I have seen him grow more in the last couple of years than, than I mean, it's, it's been baffling. It's been baffling how much he's grown. And he exudes our mission, vision, and values. He's loyal. He is loyal, loyal, loyal. And, uh, and I appreciate it. I can't wait to hear what he has for you. Um, but more importantly, the last time he was up speaking in front of the general, he needed a redo. So that's why we're having him come up now. <laughs> but, uh, but man, if there's anybody who doesn't make excuses on this entire team, it's Kyle Harris. Come on up, buddy. So I, I was extremely excited to talk today right after General Eberhardt, but I'm way more excited now that there was a compliance buffer <laughs> in between. So this would be a lot more, a lot more entertaining. But it's funny, I had this just jam up presentation on taking ownership. I got to the office a couple days ago and looked at the agenda and it said, Tyler Harris, own your excuses. I was like, own your excuses. I thought I was talking about taking ownership. I think that's a little bit more specific. I was like, okay, well, I'll talk about owning your excuses, but I'm really going to talk about leadership. And then General Eberhardt <laughs> gets up here this morning and <laughs> very, very, very eloquently talks about leadership. So I feel like I'm put right back in that situation from Arizona just a few years ago. But to start out, here's what I'll say. So when you talk about owning your excuses, it's the best way to kind of frame this conversation on taking ownership, because the reality is, until you own your excuses, there's really nothing else to take ownership of. It's the number one thing that every single person in here needs to take ownership of, is your excuses. And so often, every single day, I get questions. And those questions are usually just excuses kind of positioned as questions in hopes that my answer will justify some type of lack of effort, if we can just be completely honest. And I can just be real with you guys. Ah, oh, man, I'm just so tired of hearing excuses. I'm just so sick and tired of hearing excuses. Nathan, are you tired of hearing excuses? I mean, we hear them all the time. Joseph has all these awesome phrases for his definition of excuses, whether it's a firm hold on an empty sack. So I think that's his favorite. Firm grip on an empty sack or the skin of a reason stuffed with a lie, all these things. But you know who doesn't make excuses? It's leaders. Leaders, leaders don't make excuses. And so that's how I kind of want to set up my talk today is to talk to you guys about leadership, because if you become a better leader, it'll choke out all of your excuses. The last thing I'll say about excuses specifically is that it's just a zero ROI. There's no return on an investment of an excuse, period. I'll take it a step further and say that it's also the quickest tell of a non-winner. It's the quickest tell. As soon as I'm talking to someone and they start giving excuses, even if they're valid excuses, it's still, I know for a fact, that that's the quickest tell of a non-winner. That's a really nice way of saying loser, just so you know. But over the next 25, 30 minutes, uh, my hope 
is to pull a leader out of each and every one of you. I truly believe that sitting in this room, every single one of us has a leader inside of us, even General Eberhardt. <laughs> <laughs> but it's my hope that we can pull that, pull that out. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through these six aspects of leadership. And I actually got this from one of my mentors, a guy by the name of Gerard Adams. The first is leaders have fearless faith. Second, leaders have self-discipline. Leaders show forgiveness to themselves and to others. Leaders express gratitude. Leaders have impeccable integrity. And lastly, and probably most important, leaders take massive action. So as I go through each of these six, six aspects, I'm gonna give you kind of my thoughts on each one. I'm gonna give you my application of how it pertains to this specific business that we're in. Then I'm gonna give you the opportunity to own it. And that's where I'm gonna need a little bit of participation from you. I do want you to write some stuff down. And I'd really love, I promise this will be awkward, but no one feels less awkward than me right at this moment. So when it comes time to own each one, I'm gonna say one, two, three, and we're all gonna say own it. Can you please just do that for me? That would be great. Because if it's just me up here saying one, two, three, own, it's gonna get really weird. And I don't want that. So let's start with number one. Actually, you know what, let's practice that. One, two, three. Oh, no. All right, okay, thank you. So let's start with number one. Leaders have fearless faith. Fear, it can be paralyzing. Has anybody ever experienced that before? It can be extremely paralyzing, but it's something that we all face. What leaders do is they operate, and not only operate, they operate at a high level even when they feel fear and uncertainty. I believe, and I've, it's funny, I've never actually had this conversation with Nathan, Jeff, Joseph, but I believe that the reason I'm standing on stage right now, I believe the reason why I am now a partner in Consolidated Assurance is not because of my massive intelligence, it's not my dashing good looks, it's just because I was able to operate in the face of fear and uncertainty. So I'll tell you a story. I was about a year into the business, and you guys know my story. I was broke and in debt and in a bad place when I got started in this business, and it changed my life. And so a year in, after this life change, making an incredible income, extremely passionate about what I'm doing, in my car, about to go inside to do a briefing, and I got a phone call. It was a Georgia number, and I answered it, and someone said, hey, it's so-and-so with the compliance division of the Georgia Department of Insurance. I was like, okay, hello. And they had some issues. They had been looking into the $5,000, at that time, no-cost policy or no-cost benefit. And they had some, just some issues and a lot of questions. And they wanted to do some digging into that more. And I said, okay, no problem. And so I hung up that phone call and now faced a situation where I didn't know if I was gonna be able to sell in Georgia for another day, for another week, another month, another year. Really had no idea. As you can imagine, that could be pretty paralyzing. And so what, what did I do? I hung up the phone, I called Joseph. I explained to him what just happened. Then he took it from there and got the people at AFBA involved and they started working on it behind the scenes. More importantly, what did I do when I got off the phone with Joseph? When I got off the phone with Joseph, put my bag on my shoulder, and sold 10 life insurance policies. Over the next year, without knowing whether I was gonna be able to sell for another day, week, month, or year, I sold another 2,000 life insurance policies. All without knowing if the very career that I was excelling in was even gonna exist for me. All the while never getting a single update from James on what was going on with it. <laughs> I'm, glad he, I'm glad he's not in the room. Not one single update, not one single like, hey, tell, just so you know, things are looking good. Like nothing, nothing, none of that. He came over me, I just forgot. Yeah, that's, that's probably. Working on that inclusive thing. That's probably, that's probably more accurate. But I just, I just kept plowing ahead and kept doing what I knew to do, which was just taking massive action. And I truly believe that's why I'm sitting here. I truly believe that's why I'm in the position um, that I'm in. And so as it pertains to this business, Oh, wrong way. I use the word faith and trust interchangeably. And what I had in that moment is I had 100% trust 
in the leadership of our organization from day one, that's why I got involved. But in that scenario, I had 100% trust in the leadership of our organization that they had my back and that they were gonna take care of it and that I could go and do what I needed to do, which was execute, and that the rest would work itself out because the right people were involved. And so for me, and for all of us, to know and to have that trust, and again, faith and trust, to have that trust in the leadership that you're doing not only something that's good, but something that's impactful, something that is changing the face of the way people do business in the United States, that actually can go out and make a living by actually helping people. And the more people you help, the more money you make. But having that trust and leadership behind. So, all right, so this is the first one. One, two, three, oh. own it. All right. So what I want you to write down is, what is one fear that you have that is holding you back in your business? I'll give you 30 seconds. What is one fear that you have that is holding you back in your business? So I'm going to ask one person to, to share theirs. One fear. Anybody want to share their fear that's holding them back? Robert. What do you think the answer is? I got shut out of Atlanta four different times. Tyler was the best friend of mine. Four years now I got shut out. So number two, number two, leaders have self-discipline. So it was Aristotle that said, we are what we repeatedly do. So excellence is not an act, it's just a habit. And it's so funny, some people will ask me, how do you stay so motivated? You seem so motivated all the time. How are you so motivated? I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not. Like there are so many days that I'm, that I'm not motivated. It's discipline, it's developing habits. That's why I believe this system that's been created is the best on this planet for instilling that in people because when my alarm clock went off at five and I knew I had to be in a roll call at six and that there was gonna be a shift leader there that was waiting for me, it wasn't an option. And so this wasn't just me having this self-discipline that I'd always had and it was forced upon me. You gotta be there, people are waiting for you. But self-discipline is the key to becoming a great leader. Don't let your short-term comfort destroy your long-term success. This is such a great quote. Don't let your short-term comfort destroy your long-term success because the way I look at self-discipline, I call it do it anyway. Because the reality is there's gonna be things that you have to do that you don't feel like doing and that's okay. And by doing so, it's uncomfortable. When you do something that you don't feel like doing but you know you should do it, it's, it's uncomfortable. But don't let that short-term comfort destroy your long-term success. So what does that look like in our business? There's some days that you just don't even feel like getting up in the morning. Four hours of sleep. You don't even want to wake up, but you do it anyway. Making 100 phone calls on a Monday to set up initial briefings for that week. Sometimes you just don't feel like doing it, but you do it anyway. So let's own this one. One, two, three. Okay. <laughs> Write down, what is one habit <laughs> that you need to adopt that will help you to succeed? And what's one habit you need to break? So what's one habit that you need to adopt to help you to succeed? And what's one habit you need to break? Joseph, if you want me to help, me, help you with yours, I will. Anyone want to share one of theirs? Trey. I need to read. I need to read more. I need to learn yes. more because readers are leaders and oh. I don't know enough, so I've got to read more. That's a great one. You're not a great leader for not reading. <laughs> or listening. I don't necessarily read a lot, but I listen to a lot of books. 
Number three. Leaders show forgiveness to themselves and others. Do you guys know that people will let you down? They'll hurt you. They'll, they'll make you upset. It's just the way the world works. The key is, is forgiving them. Not forgiving yourself. That's probably the biggest one. But not forgiving yourself and others may be the one thing <laughs> that's holding you back from the leader you were born to be. You've got to forgive people. Again, it's a zero ROI. <coughs> Grudges, zero ROI. Resentment, zero ROI. Doesn't do anything to help you, only hurts you. We'll get real, real on this one. How many of you, show of hands, have ever been upset, frustrated, or angry with me? It's probably way, it's way more. You guys are being way too nice. How about Joseph? How many people, show of hands, have ever been frustrated <laughs> with Joseph? James has got two hands up and a foot. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. All right, one, two, three. Own it. Own it, own it, own it. All right, what I want you to write down, who do you need to forgive to become a better leader? If it's yourself, what do you need to forgive yourself for? Anyone want to share? Say no. I have to forgive Don't say me, please. Father and myself because yeah. I've given him power over me for all these years. I mean, um, I look at the age that I'm at and I'm like I'm still, you know, a five year old when I'm around him. So. That's, did you hear what she said? She said she gave him the power for all those years. That's the thing about pointing the finger at someone else excuses but that's the thing about forgiveness is when you forgive them and you point the finger at yourself and take responsibility of doing that you literally take all that power back and it's not like slowly over time it's immediate like the second that you take that you forgive that person it's immediately you have that back and you can feel it and it's not like oh i'm in control now because i forgive you no it's like i just mm -hmm. i forgive you and i'm done I and mean, yeah. you know it doesn't matter mm -hmm. you know Exactly right. Number four, leaders express gratitude. This is a huge one I'm super passionate about. Tony Robbins says, success without fulfillment is the ultimate form of, of failure. But the easiest way to feel happier and to have more fulfillment is by practicing gratitude every day. It's one of the greatest things that you can do. And so what does that actually look like? For me, I do it in the morning. I practice gratitude every morning. It may be weird, but I do it in the shower. And I do it audibly, like out loud. I say just things that I'm grateful for. This is the exact one that I used for like 18 months. I would say this every single morning in the shower. I can remember it like it was yesterday. I would say, thank you for the opportunity to work hard to make great money. Notice I didn't say thank you for great money. I said thank you for the opportunity to work hard and make great money. The thing about gratitude is it's, it's all about perspective. Every single person in here has so much to be grateful for. I'll take it a step further. There's probably 90 plus percent of people in the world that are praying day and night for the things that you can't stop complaining about. Constantly complaining about those things. You've got food, roof over your head, great career, family, friends. We have so much to be, so much to be grateful for. So, one, two, three. Right. <laughs> what is one thing, before I do this, I forgot one thing I want to make sure I, I point out. If you want to do, if you want to take gratitude 2.0, like the next level, start being grateful for the things you don't have yet, but that you're striving for and start getting super specific on those things. That's what I'm focused on now. Like, I'm grateful for that matte black Ferrari California with the red interior. I'm just extremely grateful for it. Joseph hasn't bought it for me yet, but I'm extremely, extremely <laughs> grateful for it. But, but seriously, get specific. Start visualizing these things that you wanna have. Um, and they don't have to be material things. It could just be the environment that you're in, family, friends, 
uh, freedom, di different types of things, but start envisioning those things and start practicing gratitude just as though they already exist. Like literally feeling as though you already have it. Just when I we really big on the um, on Andy Frisella and his podcast, he talks about like pulling up onto the tarmac in his Lamborghini and what what the the rail feels like as he's climbing into his jet and what the interior looks like and what it feels like when he sits down, like getting super, super clear and, and visualizing these things. So what I want everybody to do is just write down what is one thing about this career that you are grateful for? I found this picture of James. His um, mom <laughs> mailed it to me. He's such a cute child. <laughs> Anybody want to share what they're grateful for? Dirk. For a real good, a real tribe of people that I feel like I'm going to have forever. Second to be with. Yeah. That's a great one. The relationships, yeah, it's right there with that. Yeah. <clears throat> Awesome. Number five, leaders have impeccable integrity. I'm going to read this definition of integrity. I, I read this at the last leadership training we had not too long ago. But integrity is choosing courage over comfort, choosing what is right over what is fun and easy. And most importantly to me, it's choosing to practice our values rather than simply professing them. You agree? Can you go up and repeat that one more time? Yes. Integrity is choosing courage over comfort, choosing what is right over what is fun and easy, and choosing to practice our values rather than simply professing them. One of the definitions I like to use for integrity is the state of being whole or undivided. If you asked any of my family or my friends to describe me with a list of words, all in is going to be on every one of those lists, I promise you. I really only have two speeds. It's all in or all out. It's caused pain in my life for the bad things I was all in on. And it's <laughs> caused success in my life for the good things uh, I've been all in on. But to me, that's it's an ultimate form of integrity because you know that if you ask me to do something, that if I say, yes, I'm going to do it, I'm going to go all in and I'm going to execute it to my best ability. Another thing about integrity and being whole, did you realize that there's more than one Andy Dovin? There's a bunch of different Andy Dovins, a bunch of different Mike Rowles. There's a bunch of different yous. What I mean by that is there's the you with your spouse. There's the you with your friends. There's the you at work. There's the you at the bar. There's a you at this training, and then there's the you when you get back in the field. The reality is true integrity is there being only one you, like the one real you and being that you in every single one of those environments. It's not easy, but that's what integrity is in my eye. So how do we apply that to this business? As an organization, united we stand, divided we fall. Do your actions match your ambitions? All the things that we'll say this weekend, man, I can't wait to get back to North Dakota. I'm just going to tear it out of the frame. I'm going to 250 phone calls on Monday. Just watch. That's, that's great. It's a great ambitions. Do your actions match your ambitions? And when we're all of one accord, this is what Joseph's done such a great job of creating this culture within our organization that when we all are in alignment and parallel in our mission, vision, and values, then nobody can stop us. It's when we become divided that weaknesses are exposed. So one, two, three. Are you all in or divided? Last one, and I, and I think most important. Number six, leaders take massive action. I felt like 
when I got started in this business, that that was my role. <laughs> it was massive action. Joseph, Nathan, Jeff, they, they told me, you need to go out, you need to put your head down, and just put massive action into this system and show people how powerful it really is. Show people if you just follow it as it is, not deviate, not create your own way of doing it. If you just follow the system as it's been laid out before me and just input an insane amount of hours into it, that what come out on the other side will be incredible and it'll show people what's possible. And that, that was my goal from day one. Go as far as you can go and when you get there, you can see further. At that time when they told me that, I couldn't see very far, to be quite honest with you. Again, I was in a bad place. But they just told me, go out and do as much as you possibly can, put in as much effort as you possibly can. So there'd be times I would come back, I'd be in Georgia for four days, come back on Friday, I'd have a big stack of apps, and I'd come walking in, feeling all great, and slam them down on Joseph's table. I'd be like, booyah. 100 policies. He's like, how many people did you see? I'm like, 420. <laughs> He's like, that's freaking terrible. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm number one on the list. I'm number one in the top 10. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? He was like, God, your, your close ratio, your conversion is just absolutely horrible. Do you realize that you could do less work and make more money? I was just so focused on massive action that, and I used to say this, and it used to really make everybody super pleased with me and love me, I used to just say that like, hey, if you got a 90% conversion and I got 10, I'm just gonna go see 10 times more people than you and beat you every day. Because that's what they told me to do. They just told me to go out there and figure it out. But what that did, when you apply massive action, it chokes out all your excuses. It chokes them out. And then you become better. Then you refine your processes. Then you do get a better conversion ratio so that now I don't have <laughs> that problem. But massive action almost solves everything. Massive action. This idea of going as far as you can, and when you get there, you'll see further. I talked about this yesterday in the leadership meeting. It's like there's this table up here that you, you get on your tiptoes and you can see up on it, and man, the food's so much better, and the conversations are so much deeper, and you just, you just barely see it. But the reality is the majority of people, a scrap falls off that table and then just dive on it. And they're just stuck there. Not realizing that it's massive action that's what gets you to that table. But here's the thing I wanna leave you guys with is this career is active, not passive. And it took you massive action to get here today. And I commend every single person for being able to do so. But the reality is it's not just gonna take massive action to get you to the next level, to be able to see that next top of that table, to be able to see further, it's gonna take massive action just to stay here. That's just the kind of business that we're in, and it just is what it is. But if you know that on the front end, then it makes it a whole lot easier to go out and do that. But this career is active, not passive. So the very last ability to own it, one, two, three. Own it. Write down, when will you start taking massive action? There's some options. There's today, there's now, immediately. I'll take it ASAP. <laughs> this should be your answer. It shouldn't be like, it, should, it shouldn't say like October 12th or something like that. But the reality is like you don't, you don't, you don't know if you have a day, a week, a month, a year, and do you want to be remembered as the person that was taking massive action at the end? Or do you want to be remembered as the guy that was just a girl, a girl that was just kind of letting life happen to them, just going through life and whatever happened, happened. So in conclusion, to go back through these, the six aspects of leadership. Number one, leaders have fearless faith. Leaders have self-discipline. Leaders show forgiveness to themselves and others. Leaders express gratitude. Leaders have impeccable integrity. And last but not least, leaders take massive action. Thank you.
What's up guys, if you have not yet done so, please like my Facebook page. Then next to the like button, click following, which will bring a drop down. And when it says in the news feed, click see first. This will ensure that you will always see the content that we're pushing out. The last thing that we wanna have happen is for us to put out content that you actually want to see, but you don't. So make sure that you hit see first and we'll see you next time.